Jared Leto is going to be playing you in a TV drama. Do you know this? He's putting prosthetics on to really look like me. Are you going to watch it? And he told me not to. We Crashed has just finished airing its final episode, the one with all the money. And I'm sure no one was too surprised to find out whether you think they're heroes or villains, that the ones with all the money was Adam and Rebecca Newman. Today, we're going to be diving into the ending of We Crashed, breaking down the real timeline of the Newman's fall, and we're going to be talking about what happened to them afterwards, where exactly did they go, and did they get all the money? Then we're going to talk about one of the biggest talking points surrounding the entire series, and the Newmans as a whole. How does what happened with WeWork and Adam Newman compare to Theranos and Elizabeth Holmes? We're going to be talking about everything in a minute, like the ending, what happened with the lawsuits, and the whole the Theranos stuff as well. But first, I just wanted to talk about a few little things, like little details that I they put in the show that I thought was really great. So these were things like the feet on the table and licking the plate. The question is... How much do you value me? And walking barefoot and Rebecca signing her name with a heart, which a grown woman signing her name with a heart, it's just, wow. <laughs> and those things actually all happened they're real i loved also the the just subtly like they didn't draw too much attention to it and if you weren't somebody who followed like we work and everything really closely like you would just think it was just a choice of the the show makers but there was also some stuff like when they were answering the phone and they were saying the s1 stands on its own that is actually a legal requirement like when you do an s1 it is supposed to stand by itself and legally you're not allowed to talk about it or to speak to the press about it because it's supposed to contain all the information so one of the bigger things for me with the ending that i think was very very subtle and i think actually some people won't even think this is a thing or this is something they thought about and that's absolutely fine you know everybody's entitled to their own opinion this is television it's art it's subjective so if if you don't think this is that what they were trying to get at then that's completely fine but I think that they were really showing at the end that Rebecca Newman is a lot smarter than people give her credit for. She does a lot of that yoga babble bullshit <laughs> that just, it's saying stuff without really saying anything. The mission of We Grow and quite honestly, the collective we that we're all living under is to, to elevate, elevate the, the world's world. consciousness. Mm. That we grow specifically through unleashing every human superpowers and expanding happiness. And I absolutely think that nothing would have happened without her. It's pretty clear that Rebecca's trying to sort of shape Adam or help him become this world leader type that, you know, he aspires to be and that she likes. Because... Adam has the skills, like, don't get me wrong, he's a great seller, a great talker, he's interesting, he's friendly, he has a nice backstory that's, you know, it's not boring or anything. I actually know quite a lot of people who know the Newmans, and I know some people who've worked with them, they've worked with SoftBank, and pretty much all of them have said, you know, you expect kind of one of these, like, tech douche CEOs when you're meeting Adam Newman because he's in that like billionaire new modern age sort of guy that that is like this cult of the founder thing and everybody's always told me like no he's not like that at all like he's actually really warm and and friendly and just like personable and one of the authors of The Cult of We, which I strongly, strongly recommend, it was written by Elliot Brown, who did that expose, and they even actually mention Elliot's name in the finale. And the other author was Maureen Farrell, and she hadn't met Newman before, I think it was 2019, and she talks in this interview a little bit about how she was really surprised, like how 
friendly he was and and that he just wasn't you know like she expected him to be basically i mean adam's an immigrant he was in the navy he's a good looking guy he's really tall he's like six foot four or five i think and he has immense privilege like he's a straight white guy at the end of the day and and he got all his college paid for his grandmother gave him a six-figure check to start his business but this is not the sort of level of privilege power wealth that rebecca newman was playing with like she was next level sort of one percenters where you know there is a difference between being rich and being wealthy and you have access to a lot more power and connections when you're in those super super elite circles we work and adam never would have gotten anywhere without rebecca because in the beginning it was her money that kept adam and the company going and by the time that they had got money from rebecca then she was also introducing them to celebrities and people at the kabbalah center people that were really wealthy as well and this was before masa before the other investors that she poured you know millions into wework and getting it standing on its two feet and she was getting these hollywood political and just rich people involved also and i do think now like she has absolutely got what she wanted like there's people playing them on tv like anne hathaway is playing her if this was the long game if ever i've seen it honestly she probably you know couldn't have foreseen all of this stuff or expected it but they do adam and rebecca do seem to really love each other and he does whatever for her and he sees her as the center of the family that's why he put her so much in the business because he really felt as though this business would be nothing without her so i do think that like in the same way that rebecca's probably jealous of of gwyneth paltrow and like you know, she has an Oscar and she's a big movie star. But I bet Gwyneth Paltrow is just as jealous the other way because Rebecca has this husband who would like literally do anything for her as ride or die. When my eldest daughter was in kindergarten, as we started to look around for schools in both New York and the West Coast, I wasn't finding a place that was going to nurture her, her spirit and her soul as much as her mind. And they have literal billions like there is a difference between being a multi-millionaire actress and being you know in the neighborhood of 2.3 billion but that's just my opinion but we're gonna get into the ending and i do want to just draw attention to one thing first and that is the pr machine and we did get a taste of it in the final episode the newmans have been silent for two years adam did an interview in november 2021 before the publicity for the series had come out it had actually i think wrapped already so i think they wanted to get out and say something before the series and then not say anything while the series was airing because i think that they're gonna try this whole philanthropy and investor people sort of thing and try and get back in the in the public spotlight but I think they're not doing it now because anything they do would be drowned out by publicity for the show and also you know when shows like this come out all the like look I'm doing it now I'm talking about them because of the show and you know there's news articles and magazine stuff so I think you'll see them wait a little bit while you know the show dies down and then maybe towards the end of the summer you'll start to see them popping up let's talk for a moment about the future of adam newman what are you doing well we've mentioned the family office a few times so two years ago when this whole thing was happening was right when we were starting a family office and it didn't start the way we wanted because it was a big but actually sometimes when times are difficult you create the best connections and we put together a world class world class team and we invest in early and late stage venture, we invest in private equity, we invest in liquid markets, we've started a few companies, and over the past half a year, we've gotten pretty excited about crypto. 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 Because Adam has started doing things, 
that I'll talk about in a minute now, like in a public way so that they are sort of coming out of hiding because for the past two years, they've really done nothing except enjoy their money and fly around the world, which I I love that Rebecca starts having a breakdown about what we're doing to the planet. And yet she has six children that fly around on private jets, which <laughs> honestly... They've actually even started having articles removed. I had like a bunch of articles saved and when I go back now, it's just like dead link, dead link. And it's it's done in like batches. Like there was tons of stories about Rebecca's 40th birthday and inviting Jared Kushner and Ivanka and they were like in Italy and they the Kushners couldn't go because it was like a three city thing so the security issue was there and this is you know back when Trump was president so those articles there is still some you can still find some but about 10 of them just overnight went dead and there's a couple of other things that they've slowly started to disappear And they did actually try this when the S1 originally came out. They tried to get Google to remove, you know, all the bad stuff. And literally Google said to them, it's too bad. Like there's no way you would go through the advertising budget in like 10 minutes because there's just so much stuff and it's just pouring out. So just keep in mind, they have all the money, all the power, all the PR. Uh, Their PR has PR. So everything that they are saying is completely crafted. And of course, they're gonna, you know, dodge questions like a politician. I'm gonna show Adam's interview and they ask him some things, but he like answers another. And then, you know, when they talk about like his golden parachute, he's like, it's not a golden parachute. And it's literally the definition of it. But he's obviously not gonna say anything that makes him look worse and he's trying to bring things down and make things you know minimize things so you'll definitely see that in this video when when I start playing the clips even he just seems like so much calmer in this new interview do you read about yourself I don't you don't I don't you you haven't read the books or the documentaries I I didn't but some of my best uh, employees and colleagues from WeWork now work with me either on new businesses we're starting or in the family office and when they read things that are really they think is outrageous they show me so I sort of have an understanding of what's out there and also on the other side I'm not saying everything done or said or written or watched is 100% true 100% of the time about the Newmans like of course things are up for interpretation some things are exaggerated people see things differently and maybe some details have been changed here and there but I I absolutely think that he's obviously going to see his actions with like morality and stuff rather than another person just you know seeing him have all this money or behave this way and he does talk about having an issue with his ego when all this was going on that I hope he's truthful when he says he's worked on it, but at the same time, in these interviews, in these documentaries, you have like a hundred people saying, I saw this or I heard this, and then you have him saying, no, I didn't, but there's a hundred people saying he did it, so I, I, you know, I tend to err on that side. The culture of WeWork becomes increasingly frenetic. I know when I was doing some reporting about it, I was talking to one person who said that she found a a different used condom in the stairwell every single day for a week. And like said this as if this was like the least surprising thing she'd ever, but like people are having sex like crazy that, 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 you know, he, he begins living like a rich person. He, he gets this car and this driver. He, he punches, I think his trainer at one point in the offices. <laughs> is that the real Adam Newman coming out more and more and more? Or is that a product of the culture that surrounds him about about meeting from from um softbank masa son who's telling him he's a genius and he has to be crazier and reacting to that i mean i think it's definitely both but even i mean even among tech founders even among billionaires like the way he lived was just seemed so insane by any stretch of the imagination like It just seems like he took everything. It was definitely something of the culture, but then he took it to a new level. And his wife also, I mean, they had five children. They had nannies for each children. They had uh, 
like eight houses all over the world. They had the private jet. They were on, I mean, everything. They had the his surf instructor from Hawaii come and live with them and his family. And like they had nannies for those kids. Like everything was just <laughs> and then he had they what they rented two Airbnbs for the surf instructors for the, all the people. The, there were three Airbnbs. Three, now. okay. <laughs> <laughs> to go with their three Hamptons homes they owned. <laughs> So the ending was pretty accurate. I would say the biggest changes to the kind of timeline at the end and and all of the events that are transpiring is the stuff that happened with Massa and what happened after Adam stepped down. That is the CEO who stepped in his place. And there actually was three CEOs. So there was two co-CEOs and then the real CEO came in because the co-CEOs obviously stepped in while the ship was captainless and they were never really the plan to stay on long term. That was just while they were searching for the right person to become WeWork CEO. So I'm going to talk about the CEO stuff first and then Masa and then we'll go into where the Newmans are today, what they're doing, what we might expect from them and also the comparison of Theranos, WeWork, Adam Newman, and Elizabeth Holmes. So as I mentioned before, the character of Cameron, who was basically, you know, the voice of reason, he was created specifically for the show. But I do think there's some aspects of the real person, Marcelo Claret, who was a Guatemalan-born executive from SoftBank that was sent in to try and fix some of the things after Newman stepped away. And I think they did a similar thing to the dropout. Wow, you guys are such good liars. Where they took a bunch of the real life people and made the characters kind of an amalgamation like of all the people, like taking little bits of things that happened to certain people and their personalities and making them into one person. And with the Cameron character, that's not what happened though. This this person was created completely for the show. The, there was no one <laughs> saying, hang on a second, what's going on here? And I think the same reason that they did this in the dropout is the reason that they did it in We Crashed. It's that these are real people that, you know, yes, there is some things that they could have done differently, but for the most part, they're just normal people trying to do their jobs I'm not talking about Adam's family or executives but they didn't really portray any real staff members and even you know to some extent executives it really was the upper upper people that were you know Jamie Diamond and and Bruce and all these people that they actually named their public figures and you know Adam and Rebecca even though they don't think that you should be able to take their life story and portray it on television what happened in the world that we can take a person look exactly like them put on prosthetics put their wife and kids in a show and then do a show on a narrative that is as we just shared some of it because we've never spoken we've never said the different side on a single side the narrative that I'm telling you is not factually true a lot of the things and actually do a show about that and profit money from it. I think back in the day, you were not allowed to do this. And I know public figures you can do, but if you use their face, use their name and tell a false story, I I wish we were able to create entertainment that was different. They walked away with over a billion and screwed their employees. I mean, having a TV show made about you, it's not really the worst punishment. And it also falls under the whole it's fiction, it's fiction, Uh, you know, it's not, this isn't a documentary, and we all know that, and the Newmans also have the benefit of being able to say, oh, you know, they exaggerated this, and they exaggerated that, I'm not saying everything in the series, or even in the documentaries and the books, is 100% fact, so do take everything with a pinch of salt, but also, I do think they, they made the right move here by not, you know, basing, this person on an exact person that worked in WeWork because these people, they've, they've, they've been through enough. They need to go on living their lives. But I really would have liked to have seen more of the people that were 
encouraging Adam. He had a lot of people around him that were his and Rebecca's family members that were very ill-equipped for the jobs they were doing. They were being paid astronomical salaries and benefits and all these things and I also would have liked to have seen more focus on the fact that it just was rampant nepotism. Adam has several family members working in the business who make open quote less than 200,000 close quote. That's comforting. The ownership structure chart is similar to a hieroglyphic on a cave wall about the survival of our species. Harvest the crops when the sun is high on the horizon. Do not venture over the hills as hostile tribes live there. And, by the way, do not buy this stock. Straight, rich, white males that were all the, the top executives. And it just was not a great place to be a woman, a minority, someone who was LGBTQ, to work there. And they do touch on these things. And I also understand there's only so much time. But I think the thing about Adam's family and stuff, they, they could have gone a little bit more into that. The tone deafness and lack of awareness to show these videos, it was incredible. Basically, you're the CEO, you had all the CEOs, and you really didn't see any minorities up in the higher echelons. There wasn't proper diversity we were, period, hard stop. Although I think like with the dropout, they didn't want to put too many real people in it because they're not public figures that benefited immensely from this situation like Adam and Rebecca and Masa and a couple of the other people in here. And I also think there was some people that were very conveniently left out of this whole thing. And one of those people that very much pumped WeWork up and was becoming a kind of face of WeWork was Ashton Kutcher. For some reason, there was an expectation that there was going to be like a $20 billion or a $16 billion raise. It's a $6 billion raise. It's the second largest venture capital investment of all time. I'm an investor in Uber, so I know what the first largest one was. Now they have $10 billion invested in this company. So the notion that anybody is projecting that they don't have confidence in the company, I think is crazy. I have confidence in the company. Adam took Ashton Kutcher along as this kind of pump up guy. And the the picture that's used on the front cover with Made by We when Adam has like the colored writing, that event, Ashton Kutcher was at it. First of all, Thank you, Ashton. It's amazing. It's much After better. the collapse and the deal, they're out there trying to put this really good face on. He brings along Ashton Kutcher as this pump-up guy, and it, it, it was really disingenuous. It's While not an investor in WeWork, he was with the whole creator fund, which they didn't t talk about this either, but I, I understand they only have so much time. And with the creator fund, it was basically like a mini vision fund where Adam would, would give out grants and things to companies, like people would come in and pitch for things, kind of like a real life shark tank. But apparently the whole thing was just like not managed well. And they would say to people, oh, okay, we're going to give you 50 grand and just never give it to them or they would send the money to people twice and just all this really crazy stuff happened with it and Ashton Kutcher also had all this money poured into stuff for him as well and Ashton Kutcher was actually one of the people who was very much in the press doing interviews backing up and talking about how WeWork was a tech company. So there's there's this like really famous interview that's in all of the documentaries and basically Adam is in that colored shirt made by We and he just looks a wreck. And this was when he was getting really desperate and he was going to all of the the companies that we see in the in the start of the seventh episode when he's like at Google and has the suitcases and he's trying to get money from Silicon Valley. This is when people say like it was a real tipping point for him because before he was this like, you know, charismatic salesperson but when he started to get desperate, aka when WeWork was running out of money and he knew he either had to get money from Silicon Valley and investors or he needed to IPO and obviously he was doing everything he could 
not to IPO because he didn't want to show the books. So when he was trying to get this money, he had Ashton Kutcher going out and being like, we work is amazing. And he does all these interviews and he basically says, oh yeah, I thought it was a real estate company, but I've, I've seen the numbers and it's a tech company. It's a tech company. And at this event too, there's, there's an interview where Adam gets asked about IPOing and he's like, when we work as ready, we'll IPO. And the interviewer, she really starts to press him. And in a way she's kind of like, oh, aren't you desperate for money? Like, why aren't you IPOing? And he just like bold face lies and tells her, oh, we've got money for years. Like we don't need to IPO, It we're, we're good, we're good. And Ashton Kutcher's there like, yep, yep. It's above and beyond what we need to fund the company for the next okay. four to five years. Adam was saying things that were completely false. WeWork was currently a bonfire of cash and was gonna run out of money by the end of the year. And this, few weeks later is when you know they're trying to IPO and do the S1 and everything fell apart and I'm sure if we did some six degrees of of Ashton Kutcher and Jared Leto Anne Hathaway or even like the producers who who made this and worked on this I'm sure there's someone in there that's linked to Mila Kunis and and Ashton Kutcher and they didn't want to be associated with it in any way. But I do also know they're not going to waste time just to have characters like that in it. But Ashton Kutcher absolutely should have been in it. It was the pumping up of WeWork that he also was a part of. And he had a lot of money poured into his company Sound Ventures from WeWork and the Newmans as well. Okay, so we're gonna go over the timeline a little bit of the whole everything falling apart. So on the 14th of August, the S1 is filed. This is 2019 and everything goes absolutely bananas. If you tell a 30 something male that he's Jesus Christ, he's inclined to believe you. I cannot believe his wife is choosing his successor or so egregious that he would have his 20 to one voting shares or I can't believe the company is paying him six million dollars for the trademark to the word we. Something is very wrong here. I mean very wrong. In no specific order. The board's willingness to sell shares at 80% off after seven days says insiders knew the firm was desperate for more money. And the price they advertised just seven days previous was not a real number. Cult of personality firms seem especially vulnerable to massive declines in value or just outright fraud. With many of these unicorn IPOs, the CEO was mentioned anywhere between 12 and 40 times. In the case of Adam Newman, it was 170 times. Rebecca is very involved in the part of the document that people laughed at and they were spending a lot of time in the Hamptons and they had this sort of constant string of WeWork employees who would get a seaplane or helicopter to go out to the Hamptons just to meet with them on some IPO stuff. Red flags here that are literally the size of Kansas. Okay, buckle up. Adam Newman, the CEO, has sold $700 million in stock. As a founder, I've sold shares into a secondary offering to get some liquidity and diversify holdings. Okay, I get it. But three quarters of a billion dollars? This is 700 million red flags that spell words on the field of a football field at halftime that say the following. Get me the hell out of the stock, but you should buy some. He was buying buildings and then asking WeWork to lease those buildings from him. And on the 14th of September, the board bans Rebecca Newman and they say they want to cut her influence from the company. Two days later, on the 16th of September, they officially delay the IPO. So obviously we don't know the exact date, but over this month between the 14th and the 14th, Adam went to see Masa in Tokyo and this is what I was saying before, like they changed this a little bit and I, I understand why they did because I feel as though if Adam would have gone to, to Masa, it kind of would have broken the flow of what was going on in the show. So Adam went over to Japan and he went to have this meeting with Masa about the IPO and he was like, I'm going to do it, I'm doing it. And Masa was like, 
absolutely adamant that he was not going to do it and he told adam that he was going to use everything in his power to block the ipo and Massa actually lost it a little bit on newman which is very rare you know people say he doesn't really raise his voice or get angry and he got really angry with Adam. Massa actually had this alternative plan to get WeWork the cash that they needed as opposed to IPOing. And at the meeting, Massa brought this guy called Lex Greensell, who is an Australian businessman. And Adam and his company were actually calling him Lex Luther and said that they just had like bad vibes from the whole situation. So Massa gave him this offer and said, you know, get the money from this Australian businessman. And Adam was like, no. And he went to leave and it was quite late. So they got on the private jet and Japan has this rule where flights can't take off after 11 p.m. And it was like 10.55. And by the time they were getting down the runway, it was, you know, a couple of minutes before 11 o'clock and the pilots were told no cut it like you know you can't go and even though this was never confirmed a lot of people say like Massa used his power to like not let them fly because they still hadn't officially decided anything and the next day they went back but by this stage Massa had said you're absolutely not doing the IPO so two days after postponing the IPO on September 18th the Wall Street Journal publishes the expose on Adam and WeWork and this is the, you know, the front cover of the newspaper that we saw so much in the last episode with Adam on the front with the really famous picture and this just again set off an absolute firestorm because all of the sources in the newspaper were clearly WeWork employees and it just was bad bad news like people were going absolutely wild and more stories started pouring out like it was literally like a dam had burst for everything bad that had ever been said or done at WeWork and anything bad that Newman himself had done or Rebecca it just all it's, came out I, I mean literally seeing himself on this global scale where where he's on par or above global leaders and so he we actually have a scene where he he, he kind of snubs Justin Trudeau by, by canceling the prime minister of, of Canada by just canceling something last minute on it and be like, ah, we'll, we'll reschedule it later and he he almost snubs Theresa May from from uh the, the UK when she comes to town so I mean, it's just and this was sort of nothing to him he, he he saw himself above these people and only six days later on the 24th of september adam steps down as ceo they have the vote and he they actually didn't see him in the room he actually dialed in and when they do votes like that it's like all the the same time but of course like it's a tv show they want to create tension so they all do it individually and Adam was no longer CEO. So the CEOs who took over, as I said before, you know, that character of Cameron was created for the show. So the two guys who took over were Artie Minson and Sebastian Gunningham. And their background is like Amazon, Apple, Time Warner. They had some good experience, but not real estate experience so it was kind of understood they would step in as ceo to kind of do this co-ceo ship while they're searching for someone more appropriate for a real estate company because previously they'd been like coo and cfo so they were definitely you know qualified executives but they really were saying the board was saying we need someone who has real estate experience because guess what this is a real estate company so absolutely like in the show we work was out of cash they had no money even after closing the school and selling all the wave pools and all the other crap that it was looking desperate because they literally couldn't afford to fire people they couldn't afford severance packages and they were going to go bankrupt so the exact situation Massa had to save them and that's exactly what happened but 
just like in the show, Adam got this golden parachute, even though he keeps saying it wasn't a golden parachute, but not only was it a golden parachute, it was one of the largest golden parachutes ever for a CEO. It seemed like we this, we grow, we live, we work, we, 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 we. You know, it's gotta be we, not me. It was we for everybody, except for Adam. So his golden parachute consisted of $180 million in consulting fees, almost $200 million in previous expenses that were forgiven. So this is like every time he used the jet, like all the things that he had WeWork employees work on for him and Rebecca, like all the expenses for, you know, going to the summer camp and like all the alcohol that he had and just everything that he expensed through the company they ended up paying for he was given 500 million dollars in credit from softbank and of course the biggest chunk of all a billion dollars for his shares and a total package worth about 1.7 billion dollars which included what he was able to sell in shares refinancing of a 500 million dollar loan um but it was just in you know exactly countered what what should happen this come up in so it was instead he's you know that he's much. rewarded yes if, if you get 1.7 billion dollars for falling flat on your face um why not fall flat all the time that <laughs> seems seems like a, the best thing i can imagine as, as one person put it to me it's uh it was like theranos Except instead of ending up on trial, he ended up a billionaire. <laughs> All total together, we're looking at about $1.7 billion to stop hurting his own company. He got a golden parachute worth $1.7 billion dollars the idea that there would be all this money given to adam was demoralizing you know that kind of sticks in your craw a little bit particularly when you've been preached that about it's all about we if that's your deal and you're sitting on all this money and you really believe in what you were saying the whole time you should give some of the money back to help the employees who got screwed So like in We Crashed, Masa didn't pay and Adam had to end up suing Masa. And in the end, he got it. He's literally a billionaire and he still has about $2 billion of WeWork stock. Pretty much after all of this happened, the way they kept throwing like, oh, no comment, no comment in the show. That's what happened. For two years, they they didn't do anything except enjoy their money and travel they spent a big chunk of time in in israel actually people saw them at the airport getting on a shakara commercial flight and they have six kids now i i really like think it just it's i can't believe that these people like Rebecca Newman was crying on a podcast about what we're doing to the planet. I feel bad about what we're doing to the planet. Yeah. And she has six children and flies around on private jets like, Lord. <laughs> so Masa ended up paying out the money. It was, I think, around August in 2021 Adam ended up getting the money and like I said they they traveled spent money traveled spent money Rebecca did end up getting the curriculum to uh, we grow that they've changed the title to soulful so it's school of life for life so soulful without the use but that's how they pronounce it and god i only can imagine what they're gonna do with that so if you have small children especially in new york like watch out when we work finally went public adam had a party and miguel was there and i don't think they'd seen each other since everything happened miguel actually he was at we work still for for a while and he left in the summer of 2020 when all of the Black Lives Matter protests were going on. And he basically said, you know, he'd benefited from a system that, you know, values and favors rich, white, straight guys. So he said that he was going to, 
you know, do some introspection, but he really hasn't done much apart from enjoy his money. And, I, you know, Miguel's, Miguel's a difficult one because I'm sure there's some people who look at it and say, oh, well, he, he really never wanted WeWork to get as big as it did. And as it did get bigger, he actually diluted a lot of his ownership stake to Adam and he would always say, I don't want to be the center of attention. I want to be near the center of attention. But honestly, I think he's just as guilty too. Like he just was happy to stand by and do nothing while Adam, you know, made them rich and, uh, they, you know, they stood on the back of all their employees. And that's the same thing. The board, all of them, they were all happy to stand by and let Adam do whatever he wanted as long as he was filling their pockets and then they turn around and stab him in the back at the first moment of you know stuff going crazy and there was actually a quote from an insider that knew about the the party there was about 100 people who went to this we work as going public party and they said the irony is not lost on the fact that they're inviting former WeWork employees who got no money from the company they nearly destroyed, and in some cases, some who were laid off after the last IPO attempt, an insider told the New York Post. And it is day drinking, just like the olden days at WeWork. I know it's the New York Post, but Adam also just bought 4,000 apartments in Miami. And he's also invested in this company, Alfred, which is like a concierge service for apartments and houses. So eh, rich people, thanks. <laughs> Just before the series came out, I started to see a few little articles coming out about them that really seems like carefully crafted PR spiel. And I absolutely predict that once now that the show's over like once it's over and it's been a little bit of time then they'll really start trying to craft this new image as I think they're gonna go for like investor and philanthropists like that sort of angle because I think they knew that the show coming out anything they did was going to be drowned out by the show so Adam did that interview in November so I think that was him getting out to speak before the show came out and then letting it the show ride and now they're going to come out and they'll, you'll start seeing all these little articles it won't be in anywhere like the New York Times or or uh, Wall Street Journal or anything like that it'll be like Vanity Fair and these places where they have influence and connection and know people and you'll see these little like puff pieces talking about their generosity and all this because they'll try and claw back some sort of public image in any way they possibly can. So the last thing to talk about is Theranos, WeWork. What can we learn? Is there anything to learn? Is this some sort of representation as to how lost Silicon Valley investors, the world, capitalism, all of it is. And in short, yeah, that <laughs> just shows you how broken the system is. A mad man came in. He was empowered by bankers and by the board to do crazy things. He took $10 billion worth of money. He built a company that had thousands of employees. And he ran it into the ground. He blew it up in the most spectacular fashion. And there's real victims, right? There, there are employees who thought they were going to make money on their stock options who, who haven't. There are, there are building owners who had these leases that became paranoid as to whether they were going to be honored. Is this a suggestion that the system is broken? Like, this isn't how capitalism is supposed to work. Is we work an example that, like, something has actually gone wrong in capitalism? It it, yes, <laughs> it is. I mean, one of the scariest parts for, for us is is that we haven't learned anything from this. It, it, there was a very brief period of introspection in sort of Silicon Valley afterward where people were talking about, maybe we shouldn't just give founders control without asking any questions and go along with billions of dollars. And that lasted about five minutes. There's a lot of people. I, I constantly see every interview with, with the journalists who talk about this thing or 
anybody even talking about We Crashed or The Dropout, like they've been two big shows with huge audiences and it's also generated a lot of discussion. As I'm sure people watching this, like people who watch who are watching this aren't really going to be the general audience. It's probably going to be people who are aware of the Theranos story, the WeWork story, who Adam and, and Elizabeth are. So I I think that these series have introduced this whole these characters or these people and their companies to a general audience that that maybe weren't aware of all of this going on and people even in my comment section asking how do you think this compares and actually when Adam did that interview he was asked the same thing about Theranos and and actually how Elizabeth Holmes and Theranos compares to his situation. Relatively difficult question that's been asked now multiple times here, um, which is there's a view, and I'm curious what you think of the comparison. There are people who compare you um, to Theranos, to Elizabeth Holmes, to this idea that there was this sort of fake it till you make it kind of approach. What do you think of that? So I'm going to play the clip here and, and then we'll talk about it afterwards. When you refer to WeWork as a fraudulent company or compare it to companies that don't exist today and are actually being, and again, I don't want to make any assumptions on things I don't know, but to companies that are not around and, and are actually being uh, dealt with in a very specific way, forget me, you're offending the employees that built this company. You're offending the management team today that's running it. You're offending Marcelo. You're offending Vivek. You're offending Barry Sterling, who led the pipe. We work as a public company, it's in the billions, it's, it has a ticker that's we, which we like, and it's positioned to be, to be a real winner. And if you're going to say that it's a house of cards or it's fraud, you're, it's just false. You actually uh, had your lawyers go to HBO, which had you in a documentary, uh, and had them take out certain words where they were comparing you to these things. So, regretfully, um, when we tried, so as we said, I didn't speak. Then we tried a little bit to make some corrections. No one cared. And it's a shame, but we live in a world today, and maybe you're more familiar with it than me, that sometimes, unless you're ready to be slightly more aggressive, which people who don't have access to funds actually couldn't be, no one listens. So I'm sure a lot of people picked this up. Notice how he completely deflects his involvement and anything to do with him and Elizabeth Holmes it's we work and that's why he's latching onto that because he can latch on to the employees and their hard work and the fact that they didn't get anything from this and it really annoyed me to hear that because it's giving himself such a pass if you had to pick an analog for Adam Newman young charismatic visionary with an outsized vision of himself and a delusional view of the firm's role in society, surrounded by gravitas slash old white guys, who what is more fitting than Elizabeth Holmes and Theranos? There are lessons to be taken from the story of we. One that's received less coverage is what young successful people should take away from this story. You and your success are meaningful. You can build economic security for yourself and others and create great things. But humility and a recognition that nobody is bigger than the market. Is and profound. also there you have him talking about the HBO documentary and, and getting it changed. And he's basically just saying now, I have all the money in the world. And if I don't like what someone's saying, I can crush them with money and lawyers and this and that. And that's the whole thing I've been talking about, that you will start to see these positive articles, but then you also will start to see the disappearance of people actually calling them out on stuff. And that's why it can only really be done through big publications like the Wall Street Journal and like the New York Times that they're able to protect themselves because they have money. Theranos had good employees too. Theranos had people that had no idea what was going on and they were ruined for it. There was someone in my comments of one of my Theranos videos saying that their cousin worked at Theranos and for years they couldn't get a job afterwards and had taken it off their CV because it just was such a black mark on their resume. 
And it's the same with WeWork. The employees were the people that were hit the worst with all of this. And they were the ones who who were doing good work. They weren't out fleecing people and lying and manipulating everything and just trying to get rich. They were just trying to do their job and make a decent livable wage. He was so charismatic that all of these staffers, a huge amount of the tech press, a lot of the smarter industries in the world lost grip on reality. And suddenly this thing they believed in wasn't real. So what about the comparison of Newman and Holmes? Well, of course, legally speaking, I mean, there is no comparison because Holmes is a criminal and what Adam did, while not illegal, is immoral. And Adam's fanboys do love to remind us all of that, don't they? That the what he did wasn't illegal. But I like to look at it this way. So if you think about Elizabeth Holmes and Theranos and what she did, the lies she told, basically it's as if she had a stable at her house and Adam has a stable at his house too and Elizabeth Holmes's stable is completely empty there's nothing in there and she's gone out to Silicon Valley and to all these investors and everything and said I've got a unicorn at home and it's a magic unicorn and it can give you powers and it can give you money and it can tell you everything you need to know about your blood and I've got it right here. Adam has a stable too but in Adam's stable he's got a regular horse but he's gone out and said I've got a unicorn that can revolutionize real estate and can save orphans and can you know solve the housing crisis and solve this and solve that and raise the world's consciousness. Elizabeth Holmes had nothing and was lying and convincing people that she had something when she had nothing. Adam was convincing people to see a unicorn when it was clearly a horse. There was something there, there was substance, but it was in no way, shape or form what he was telling people it was. Are both of those things wrong? Well, in my eyes, and I'm sure a lot of people's eyes, yes, they are. They're both wrong. And also, did an immeasurable amount of people get hurt on both their watches? Absolutely. There was people that lost their job, lost their income. There was people that lost investments. And with Theranos, as we know, it was worse because people's health was in jeopardy. And I guess that's the question you have to ask yourself. How wrong were the Newmans? We know how wrong Holmes and Theranos was because the court told us. In my mind, I like to picture a scale and everyone has a scale that every single good, moral, selfless thing they do adds a little weight to the good side. And on the other side, everything driven by greed and selfishness and money and ego adds a little weight to this side. So be selfless and do something good and your weight is gonna increase on this side. But do something selfish and hurt others, it's gonna increase on this side. I think Elizabeth Holmes and Adam Newman scales are tipped in the wrong direction. But Elizabeth Holmes has a lot more penance to do to get her scale tipped back in the right direction. I'm absolutely sure this is not the last we've heard of the Newmans. Adam is going into more real estate ventures and I'm sure there's going to be some philanthropy stuff involved to try and balance out some of the scales of the wrong that he's done. And Rebecca still has the We Grow Soulful curriculum. So I'm sure that she'll be using that to some extent soon. And as I said, now that the show's finished, I'm absolutely sure that they're going to use the name recognition and publicity that they've gained. Rebecca even has a Wikipedia now. And they're going to try and capitalize on that and get back out there in magazines or interviews in whatever way they can and come back as these learned and 
people who've grown and know things and even the way Adam was interviewed in November he seems to be portraying this calm collected worked on myself and maybe that's true but we need to see substance we need to see action we need to see delivery of something because he sold us a unicorn and delivered a horse but he certainly won't get away with that again so what was the conclusion to we crashed was it good was it necessary and how did it compare to the dropout I am thinking about doing a video that's more what did we learn from We Crashed and the Dropout? So let me know if that's something that you'd be be interested in seeing or even like the aftermath of We Crashed and the Dropout, something like that. Maybe like a combo video. Honestly, I feel like We Crashed and a lot of these based on real stories sort of shows can be really great and captivating. Like, like The Dropout, I think for the most part, The Dropout was brilliant. I just didn't like the way it kind of was like, at the end and gave you like three minutes to wrap everything up when there was so much more to talk about. I did think We Crash dragged a bit in the beginning, but their ending was better and their last two episodes were better. Of course, the performances were really good in, in both shows and most of these based on true story shows, because if you look at the Oscars, the Golden Globes, the Emmys, every time someone plays a real person, they they nearly always win. I mean, even look at the best actress category at the Oscars. Jessica Chastain won this year for playing Tammy Faye Baker. Renee Zellweger won for the movie Judy. And these these movies did not get a lot of even like tickets sold. They didn't get huge like critical acclaim. It's it's a thing that happens a lot that the based on real people is really when an actor can really, you know, get their teeth into the performance and normally it's not like a big box office thing it's for the performance and a lot of the times for award season to be honest i prefer the documentary i think the the hulu slash amazon in europe documentary that did the making and breaking of a 47 billion dollar unicorn i think that was really great and i i think that it gives kind of a good representation of the events because there were so many actual people that were there telling the story as well. But I know some people won't be too interested in that because without the people, the characters like the Newmans and Elizabeth Holmes and these really great performances, the story is kind of heavy on financial stuff and just people talking. And these based on real things kind of turn these people that did bad things into celebrities too. But is that the price we pay for entertainment? More people will be aware of the Newman story and that could be a good thing or a bad thing depending on what you think of the Newmans. I'm sure most people's opinions of the story, of what happened, of the Newmans lies along a scale and you have the heroes and the villains. So what are the Newmans? Are they heroes? Are they villains? Or are they something in between? Thank you so much for making it to the end of this video. If you did, you are absolutely amazing. Thank you so, so much. If you have enjoyed this video, check out my Theranos videos. I also have some big videos on WeWork if you want to go and check those out as well. I have a main channel, a Patreon, a merch store. Follow me on all of my social media to keep up to date with everything going on in the channel. And as always, make sure to stay safe, take care of yourselves, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys!